We're here in Central Park in New York to talk racing. No, they're not announcing a New York Grand Prix. We're here at the Boathouse Restaurant in the park to meet Dario Franchitti, 2012 Indy 500 champion. You know, the race is a one day event, a three hour race, but for the champion, it never ends. The days after, now he's doing the PR tour and we're gonna get a chance to talk to Dario, listen to what he was thinking in that turn one episode, what happened in the entire race and how Honda got their act together to win the 500. Let's go hear what he has to say. Indy 500 champion, I gotta start with two disclaimers, Dario. Number one, we share a couple of passions, uh, Jim Clark and uh, Sim Raceway. We both have a sponsor. But the number two disclaimer, just cause I'm short, doesn't mean I had a favorite at the end of the race. So, <laughs> I appreciate that. No problem. <laughs> Take me through a little bit of what was in your head as you came off turn four that last lap and you saw Takuma right behind you. What was going on? What did you see? What were you anticipating? How were you thinking through that? Yeah, exit of, of turn four, I was still turning and I could see him and he was close enough, you know, you get that feeling throughout the race, you see the distances to, that people have to close to pass you, and he was getting within that distance, and sure enough, my spotter starts counting him, he's like, he's two back, he's one back, oh, he's got a good run, and he's talking, and I, so I start drifting over to defend, which you're now allowed to do. Last year, you weren't allowed to do, you're allowed to defend. The rule is, you have to, I had to leave a foot plus a car width, so I was drifting over, but I thought, no, because the other rule is you can't do it in reaction. Right to the car behind and I was starting to do that. So I pulled back over and gave him way, way more than I, room than I had to. And we started to turn in the corner and I still wasn't comfortable. So I moved up further. My, my biggest worry as I turned in was obviously him on the inside, but I was in the gray at this point. Mm -hmm. And I had about half a car in the gray, um, but he still wasn't, he wasn't halfway alongside. So I still, I just moved up that little bit and then he started to spin. Um, and sure enough, as he spun, he was going backwards a little bit and he collected my car and had to catch about a half turn of, uh, of opposite and got it straight again and, and off we went. I, I missed the in-car, so I apologize. Was there a lift for you turning into one or was it enough room that you knew you had to stay flat to, to keep even? No, there wasn't any lift. I knew that I had to, had to stay flat to have any chance of winning the race and it's last lap of the 500, so you know my options were um, to lift and, and lose it or uh, you know, to, to try and stay on the outside. And I had enough grip, I was quite happy actually. As I turned in, the car wasn't sliding. I was, I was able to keep it flat, but um, he just couldn't hold it down there. His car was, he had it set up very, very uh, loose, very oversteery. And, um, you know, so he, he afterwards said that I didn't give him enough room. That, that upset me because I, I, I gave him more than, more than I had to. And um, it's not my fault that he, uh, he messed it up. Well, in our defense, our show covered uh, just what you did. We showed some photos. So um, there was a lot of debate. I'm not asking to pick sides, Takuma versus you and what you did, but there was a lot of debate about the whole turn one thing. Talk to me a little bit about how the wind was affecting where you could make passes. I mean, there was a story that I was kind of sensing that into three, the back straightaway, was not as prime a spot to make passes as one. Am I right or wrong? It's okay if I'm wrong. No, no, I think you, you definitely paid good attention there. And that was some, two people have asked me that question and both were, were very knowledgeable about the speedway. I've been going there for a, long, a lot of years, so you're obviously paying, paying good attention there. But Short, not stupid, <laughs> or whatever. Perfect size for a racing driver, you know that. We. Um, Going into one, you were going into a headwind. So the car would have more front downforce going into uh, to turn with exit of four. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get the front wings working better. So normally when you're close to a car in Indy, you lose the front end. So that would help you there. But also the, the car that's breaking the air is going into a headwind, whereas going into three is going into a tailwind. Um, so that those that all contributed to the passes being made in one. Um, when I was coming back through the field from, from that, that spin with, uh, with V so early, I was able to, to make passes both into to one and into, into three. Um, but when it really came to it and it was the leaders going, it seemed that one was, 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 was about the only place. Okay, speaking about pit lane, uh, uh, where we shared the Italian thing too. So, uh, and I heard the name call. My name call for some drivers is just kind of digresses into cursing and swearing as a Scotch person. Do you have any other creative names or have you heard creative names calling them? Oh yeah, I mean I've... I've <laughs> Give I me can, a list. No, I can't, we'll get in trouble. <laughs> I have come up with some really good ones. Um, I just, you know, he, he made a mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just, you know, I, I actually moved to the inside. They say don't break in the outside lane. I actually had moved to the inside and braked and he still hit me which was surprising because there was a whole other lane to the right side that he could have used. So I just think he was disorientated or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was when I was backwards, the front wing had been snapped off 
I wasn't feeling particularly charitable towards him and uh, not very uh, excited about our prospects for the rest of the race. I've called people human berms. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Um, we met at Daytona, and it was too early to talk about the performance of this new car, the GW12, but clearly things have evolved. Talk to me a little bit about how that car felt on the Indy track and, and where it was working and where there's still room for a little bit of uh, improvement. Well, I think it put on a good race. I think it put on a great race, a great showcase for the IndyCar series, you know, because what we did at the Indy 500, we do every week, but just there's more eyeballs on the Indy 500, so it was a great showcase. Um, the, the car itself, I'd love them to turn the boost up. I'd love them to let us have the, the, the road course boost at Indy. I think that would be really exciting. The speeds would be higher, but also it would be a real a, a bigger challenge. It's already a big, big challenge, but I think it would get rid of maybe some of this sitting duck for the leader, and you would have to be, make a really good move to get within striking distance of the leader, where you know, at the 500, it seemed if you just could sit close, you, you get sucked along in their draft. Well, and not to lose the thought on the car, but, but I was going to ask you about this. It felt like you couldn't help yourself but slingshot it. That if you lifted or did something to try to stay behind, you were losing all sorts of momentum. Mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah, it was, and it was. Indy has always been a momentum track, and it's about timing your passes as well. But just, I would just like more horsepower. I mean, everybody does. That's what we, we want. So I would say that um, next year's going to be different because we're going to have the body, body kits. kits. Honda will have one. Um, I don't know who's going to do them yet, but there's there's definitely going to be body kits. Um, this this car and this current configuration is very very affected by crosswinds like unbelievably so um, and the guys ran at milwaukee on tuesday and they, they felt the same thing as you know so any kind of wind we're very lucky it's quite low wind all month at indy um, but so it's you know it will make a massive difference to the handling i mean indy you think four corners are all the same but the crosswinds change it and especially with this new car um were so you that, getting enough grip that that even though it was hot the track was not greasy or, or well, you always, was there a catch? You always tune the car to the, uh, how do I put this, you tune it to the limit of the grip, if you know what I mean. Yes. Um, both aerodynamically, first of all, and we, Scott, myself, were able to run, it looked like less downforce than the people around us and still have the grip. So I think mechanically we had a very good setup, but the car was, was sliding. The trick was to get it to a certain feeling in traffic when it's sliding a little bit, but not too much. Yeah. And we, we, I think we did a good job, both Scott, myself, the whole target team of, of getting that. So I read a little bit, you qualified P16. Mm. You won just like Dan did in 2005, but something happened between qualifying and the race. And I know they played the artificial boost for qualifying. What can you share about what happened with Honda and what they did between that time to give you the guns you needed? Yeah, well, with the new engine rules this year, the engines have, I think it's two, almost 2,000 miles or maybe more than 2,000, the engine has to be in the car. If you make a change, it's a penalty before that. Um, we saw that at Long Beach with all the Chevys. Before the 500, the whole field was allowed to change their motors for a, for a new engine. Um, Honda back in, I mean, around about Long Beach time, they had the specification locked in for this new motor. Um, they said it was going to be an improvement. And we were, of course, saying, can we have it for qualifying, please? But they, 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 they couldn't do that with the rules. Um, it was a big, it was a big step. It was a big step in performance, but also in fuel mileage. I was just gonna very, ask. very yeah. impressive yeah. Um, that they'd make such a step. And you know, obviously, Chevy had the same opportunity to make that. And Chevy's done a fantastic job in the start of the season. So, it's it's, it's game on. It's battle on, and we're both both manufacturers are fighting. And obviously, Lotus are trying to catch up. So I have two game plan questions. It's, it looked like you and and the team and Scott had a game plan for this race. Was there in fact a plan, or did it just evolve? I think it kind of evolved. I mean, Scott was driving a very smart race, didn't want to lead, yeah. could have led a lot more laps, I think, because he, uh, he he made good progress in the first stint, didn't get spun in the pits, but Scott drove a very smart race. Um, I was, my plan was to try and get to the front um, as soon as possible, but not take any risks. But then when I got spun, that changed everything. Um, and then there's obviously that thing at the end of trying to position yourself. And I, I thought I had the opportunity to get in the lead. And I thought if a caution comes out, I want to be in the lead here. Um, and if somebody does pass me, I'll do my best to pass them back. So uh, that was that was my uh, my plan, and I felt I could sit closer to the other guys, and maybe they could sit to me. Scott was was my was my biggest worry, though. He yeah. he looked very strong as he as he always does. So uh, out of respect, uh, a couple of questions about about Dan. Uh, I, I know uh, uh, subconsciously he was with you, but were there times in the car <clears throat> where uh, consciously Dan crept back into your head? Before the start, absolutely, and that's not normal. Normally, I'm very focused. Um, but Indy, there's so much tradition at the start, all the, you know, the you know, neighbors singing back home again in Indiana, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, 
and so many tributes to Dan all month that he, I definitely thought about him before the start. Um, and it was emotional. And there was one point, about maybe 20 laps to go, when I looked up at the pole under caution and I saw the order of things and it was, it was a lot of Dan's good friends up there and that, that, that struck me. And then I got my head back into gear and got ready to go, to go back to racing. To that point, was there a game plan? I mean, mm -hmm. I'll start with the preface. I personally was very concerned that the TV and IndyCar was going to turn it into a, a soap opera about Dan. But when you, the drivers, took over, it, it was very, very well, well done. Was there a game plan between the three friends, Dixon, Tony, yourself, of, of what you were hoping to happen, what you were going to do with this moment? No. Okay. No, there, was no, there was no plan at all. Um, obviously, the TV guys did, did their tribute. Um, you know, the thing we have to remember is at Indy, the, the winner from the last season is honoured. Yeah. He's on the ticket, you know, he comes up and gets the, the ring, the trophy, all the applause of, of the crowd and everything. And, 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 you know, Susie came up and did all that. And that was, uh, was very touching. And, and the, I think the crowd, Dan, loved Indianapolis and, they, and the crowd loved him there. But, and they wanted to just do a special thing and honor him. And this was the, maybe, you know, the, the last chance to really m make a big, uh, a big deal and, a, a, you know, just show everybody what Dan meant to, to all of us. Yeah. Yeah. So I have two questions. Um, uh, the fans always have opinion about everyone. And two people in your life, uh, Chip Ganassi and your wife Ashley, uh, people have opinions. What is it that people don't know first about Chip that they should know to respect more about what he does and what he does for you as a driver? Um, I think just look at the results of, of the team. Um, it's, it's what Chip Ganassi, the racer, is all about. Um, Chip the Ganassi, the, 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 the person, you know, when, when, when somebody is in trouble, I might, get, I might get in trouble for this myself, but when somebody or somebody, a member of the, the team's family or somebody, one of his friends is in trouble, you know, certainly last year, for instance, my team manager, Barry Wands, or his son, Michael, died of cancer. And when they were going through that, and there's many other examples I can cite, Chip is the first one there to offer any kind of help he can. And um, he's, he, as I said, I'll get in trouble for this, but he is a hard businessman, but he is a, he's got a heart of gold. And um, I love racing for him as well because I think he is he's an out-and-out -out racer and loves to win. Um, he's a good guy. He's now tied number two on the list of... Okay. So Ashley. Ashley's become a race fan. What is it that people don't understand about Ashley's passion for what you do and for racing? Well, I, I think any, not just Ashley, but any of the, the partners... Of, of, of anybody who, who, who drives a racing car, but especially drives an Indy car at Indianapolis and stuff, it's a very stressful thing they do. Yeah. And they, a lot of the times they don't choose it. They don't choose to, to, to do that. Um, and we're all lucky to get the support, and in my case, I'm wavering support of, of Ashley, what she does, she loves racing. Um, but it, it's, a tough, it's a tough thing to be a racing, uh, you know, to be a racing partner. partner. And um, I think Ashley and the other wives and the other, you know, girlfriends and, and, and you know, the girls, their boyfriends, they handle it very, very well. So uh, our audience isn't all serious. So here comes the hypothetical. Mm -hmm. It's that last lap. In your earpiece, you hear two voices. You've got Chip on this voice. You've got Ashley over here in this earpiece. Who are you talking to? What do you do? Well, I only listen. Chip is the only one that's got the ability to talk to me in, those, in that situation. So now you're in trouble on the other side. Well, Ashley doesn't have a radio to talk to me. She can only listen. <laughs> so uh, that's all good. So we, uh, we share the... Uh, I'm not stalking you. We're heading to Detroit. Yep. Good luck there. You like that place. I do. Heading back? Yep. Uh, we won there in 99. Mm. And um, I actually did my deal with Chip to come back and race Indy cars at the end of 08 at Detroit. So good, good memories of that place. So you're really going to screw up Chevrolet's life by going to try to win that race? We're going to try and win every race. But uh, those guys are going to make it as difficult as they possibly can. Thanks again. Thank you. Ciao. Thanks. Thanks. Ciao.